Good evening, folks. It is the Front Runner Football Podcast as we get stuck in yet again for the second time this week. It's the Thursday night recorded edition. And uh, as per usual, I do have Mazola Mulefe and John T. Mark joining me. But a friend we haven't seen in a while. Um, and as always, a wealth of information and knowledge is uh, Veli Limnyandu, who joins us now on Zoom. Sturridge, where have you been? I'm sure the other guys have seen you. I've not seen you in a while. Uh, I guess we've all not seen each other in a while if we consider the lockdown as well. But how's life been treating you? What you been up to? Yeah, well, uh, I've been around. And uh, I think like everyone. <laughs> uh, been around? Lockdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Hey, Mazet, your, your signal today, yeah, you're chopping out, you're dropping out. Yeah, so, but I, I think one thing I can say is um, I really miss uh, being out there covering the game, um, covering sport in general, you know, mm. uh, like, like everyone else. But um, I think, like most guys, um, we continue to, um, to, 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 to cover sport um, remotely. Um, it's a pity. I've got my own issues, <laughs> but uh, and that's another story for another day. But um, look, this COVID-19, um, it has shut down everything eh? mm. um, around the globe. Um, it's unusual times. Eh? I, mean, I, mean, I, I think even, even when they postponed the Olympics, um, they said it was the first time since the World War II. Mm. Um, that, they were doing this and I was reading something earlier today um, on, on the side of marketers. I think it's, it's written by Octagon in, Eng- in England mm. um, on how this has also affected um, the, the sport, sporting rights and everything that was there, including um, the merchandise and everything that was ready to be, to be used in the Euros right. um, uh, this year. But look, I've been around. I've been watching the podcast from a distance uh, uh, when, when you guys have, have been discussing. But what, what, what I can say is that uh, the guys are doing a good job. Um, I mean, Mazola was the first earlier this week to come up with a story of um, a team in the PSL, uh, Amazon, mm. uh, who, who are uh, uh, enforcing uh, salary cuts and there are other stories which continue to break even, even uh, during this period because uh, as much as we're on lockdown but life has not stopped um, most people are working remotely you know so mm-hmm. it also means that even in our space um, there's more that we can do Right. Um, maybe let's start there, Mazola, with that story in terms of Amazulu um, being the first to do those player salary cuts. But then obviously the players union coming out and saying, OK, we get it. Times are probably tough. But um, how about a bit of transparency as in let's see exactly what the damage that you're trying to avoid is in the books um, by cutting these players salaries? Yeah, look, I think it's a, it's a fair point. The, the reason why I say that is because obviously Amazulu are still getting the PSL grant, mm-hmm. um, and which is which two, two, 2 million per month, uh, and there hasn't been any discussions about that being cut. Uh, in fact, it seems, it seems that, that that's a guarantee mm. for until the end of the season or until the end of June, July. Uh, which is the financial year. And then you have um, their spa sponsorship, which, you know, I'm told it's around two and a half million as well. Right. Uh, so, then you know, Amazulu were, were, were arguing that it's it's not the grant or the spa sponsorship that's been affected, but it's, you know, the, the other supple- sub- supplementary revenue that comes from the businesses owned by the club owners, the, the, the Sokela family and... Um, mm-hmm. um, Connor, who's also a director, you know, and a board member at at, at, at Amazulu as well. So yeah. those people, you know, the letter suggested that their businesses are struggling as a result of COVID-19, hence they have to implement salary cuts. But Safu are arguing, well, if you can show us that your wage bill is over the amount that you're getting from the PSL grant and the SPA sponsorship, yes. uh, except that there needs to be implementation of salary cuts, but right. you cannot cannot just send the letter out 
to, to, to staff and players and inform them of your decision without having had proper consultation. Hence, the players were obviously disgruntled and approached Safu for Safu to, to step in. And I, mm-hmm. I get their point. Look, we all sympathize with the clubs because it's, it's not just the clubs that are cutting salaries. It's, it's happening at major, you know, companies or retail companies it's happening everywhere it's not (laughs) it's not it's not just the club so we simplify but staff who are saying open your books be transparent let's engage rather than you just you know telling players and stuff that it is what it is and you're going ahead Uh, i think you know amazulu were were supposed to get back to uh you know the players about just the percentage of the salary cut you know, uh, uh, later on in the week. Um, and, and, you know, we haven't heard anything from, from the club. Suffice to say only, you know, I read a story done by a colleague, I mean, Ente Zamin, who's based in, in Devon, and he's spoken mm. to Lunga Sokla, Lunga confirming that, yes, this is definitely going to happen. Uh, whereas with, with, other, with other media houses, he was reluctant to, 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 to speak. But I, mm. I guess with Minen in Devon, there's a relationship there and he can, he can come on the record to to confirm what what's going on in the club. So it's it's a difficult time period, but I, I also get where Safu is coming from with their argument. Uh really, I mean, I, I just I wanna know where in the world do you know you take the money that you're doing your businesses with this side and now because that's not doing well, I can then take the money from within my soccer club and say I need that to balance the book. I mean, is that normal? Is that business how it should be done in a top league? I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering because, you know, that, that, that whole thing about club licensing comes back up again. It, it seems to me that you can't have this gray thing of your personal money and the club's money kind of being, you know, the same money. No, no, no. It's, it, it happens. It happens. And uh, I, I think for me, this is a, a very interesting story. And Mazola would, would, would know about this uh, because he was close to one club because that club is, 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 is also from, from his hood. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if, if you, you check the amount of money um, that, um, you know, I come from an area where we had a pushbacks um, and the amount of money the pushbacks owners um, they were taking from their business just to run bushbacks, you know. Um, is is it it, it it even had the potential to collapse their their personal businesses, right? You know, right. And 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 I think there's this. I was I was watching when even Mozart when he did the story and uh, even in terms of the responses, mm. uh, people seem to think that the two million rand that the teams are receiving is enough to pay salaries. It's not enough. No, you know. No. Um, it's, it's, it's not enough. Remember, the salaries is not just uh, the first team as well. It's also the staff. Uh, and the staff, uh, there's, you know, there's a long list of the staff that, 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 that Amazuri has, has got. And there are other expenses that they, they, they have as well. Right. And also, yeah. people talk about the sponsorship from SPA, but I, I don't even think the sponsorship from SPA can be compared to uh, the sponsorship that other top teams have, uh, have got, you know, mm. um, so and 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 it's normal that uh, in the PSL that um, you would have because you've got teams, teams, teams also operate on different models um, right. and business models as well. So it's normal that you would have the owner um, supplementing um, the running costs every month from. Mm his or her personal businesses. And this is what has been happening with Amazon. And the reality now is that those businesses uh, are not operating. Mm. So it means that there's no income. And, and this is the situation. And you see that the reality is that it's not just Amazon. You know, it's not just Amazon. Uh, we also heard about uh, Highlands Park as well. And uh, then there's the two teams from the NFD now. And we saw um, even today, the article that Mark Stadium did with uh, with Cape Town City, yeah. that this is the route that um, that, that, that 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 they are taking, mm. and some of uh, the guys from some of the top teams as well, they are saying they are not sure going forward, you know, right. because the right. top teams remember they've got um, also the staff complement there is it's heavy, you know? right? Of so course. so you never know always going. And I think what has also opened the window for this um, FIFA, there's a FIFA working group uh, on COVID nineteen. Mm-hmm. Um, and because this working group has been meeting, they released a document. And part of 
one of the th things that they are recommending in, in that they're saying uh, the clubs uh, are welcome to open negotiations um, also through the union, especially if the union there's um, a, a CBA. Fortunately, there's a CBA that was just signed recently between the PSL and the, the, yeah. the, the, the union. Um, on the issue of salary deferrals uh, or salary cuts, you know, and this is what we see now uh, happening. So it was inevitable that uh, this is the situation um, that we are going to get into um, because, um, look, just two days ago, I think even Arsenal uh, agreed, mm. um, it was, um, I think around 12, 12, 12%, yeah. uh, 12 or 30% uh, cut that, that, that uh, that, that they'll be okay. taken from their staff and, and, okay. and also the players. So, okay. so I, I think that it, this is also part of education as well. Uh, uh, this is a situation where people who are following football, they also need to understand how these teams are operating. Maybe also our teams, um, they've not been transparent enough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. John T, I mean, looking at that, when, when you hear all of this and, and you think to yourself, okay, it kind of makes sense then. Um, the argument is being made that if you're an owner who's taken money from elsewhere to plow into the club, it should only be fair that you can, you know, stop the hemorrhaging by taking decisions that will affect the club, whether, you know, yeah, I mean, it's good business or yeah, not. The yeah, the point that other gentlemen have made is, is, is valid. I mean, it's, we're in a global recession. Everybody's losing money at the moment. Um, of this pandemic i mean i know with caper Moy united for example roger de is a part owner there has a laundry business that presumably is doing nothing um then they're also aren't they I, if i'm not mistaken they're part owned by a petroleum company caper Moy united and we've seen what's happening to the oil price mm. um so i think that in the, with the downturn it's it's natural that that pay cuts would happen we've seen it happen globally uh, as well as valile mentioned with arsenal chelsea are supposedly also you know that's a rich club by all intents and purposes supposedly all agreed to take a 10 percent pay cut mm -hmm. um so it's it's happening everywhere um and with cape town city obviously they're sponsored by uh, from what i read of mark strain's article today this the betting company sport pesa who sponsors them um have said they can't help them to the end of the season um so that's mm -hmm. another problem for cape town city and the, obviously the betting industry i mean if there's no sport to bet on what not sure what the betting industry is well, is e going to do. Esports is booming. Hey? E Big money sports, right yeah. now. I mean, I'm sure e they can make booming. money somewhere, but they're certainly not going to be making as much money as they were when there was actual sport. No, and you enough. could bet on just about anything. Um, so it is, it is uh, and it, uh, I mean, the owner is, can, do, can basically do what he likes. He can take money from one business and put it into another. And if that's how some of the owners do operate their, their various businesses, one of which is a football club, then, mm -hmm. then you know, it's natural that they would be looking at pay cuts. Um, and I'm for, yeah, and obviously it's happening everywhere and within labor law, then companies are entitled in, in a situation like this too, as far as I know, to, to cut salaries, um, obviously adhering to whatever the law is. Yeah, I mean, it's too soon to tell what the damage of these decisions and these pay cuts and this kind of, you know, moving the eggshell around is, is, is going to have. But, you know, you always kind of see when there's money involved it, and things go belly up because of money, you'll see there's a change in the culture and also the policies of the league. For instance, in England, you know, it took money and clubs, you know, coming to their knees for them to say, actually, we need to make sure there's a fit and proper test for you to take over and all that happened. Do you see that kind of revolution on the horizon for how South African football clubs are run um, in terms of shielding them from future situations like this? Is that a question for me? Um, anybody can take it. No worries. Uh, um, anyone? No, I, don't mind. I don't mind. Um, look, uh, it's very difficult because this is such an extreme situation. Yeah. Um, to say like you, we can put a plan in place for the next time it happens. Um, or for a next time there's a situation like this, hopefully this is unprecedented for the next, well, forever, but you know, I don't know. Hopefully this is an unprecedented <laughs> situation that won't happen again. The economy will recover. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, rules, I think it would be nice to see, you know, more of the money that comes into the PSL going to the clubs and helping the clubs to, to run better. Because even without COVID-19, you see club franchises having to sell up. You know, a club like Bloemfontein Celtic that's been in serious financial trouble. It's well documented. Obviously, you could argue that the franchise structure in the PSL, where you're simply allowed to buy a club and name it and give it another name, is not 100% ethically really there. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that is, those are the rules. I would like to see a, a system where clubs could... I'm not sure uh, I understand. Siri just doesn't understand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my clubs are my clubs are better supported um, by the league and by the money coming in, uh, so that it's more of a sustainable business. Because I mean, you can we can point to the fact that in certain areas it was looking like it wasn't with the mm. recession that was happening anyway, mm. with the economic situation as it was anyway. Uh, COVID nineteen has sort of been the um, the last the straw that breaks the camel's back, if mm. you like. But mm. there was already a recession. There were already a lot of clubs in. Quite a lot of financial trouble um so that business model yeah that perhaps can be can be altered to uh to make it more more easy for a club to stay afloat um i think covid is an exceptional thing it can't really do much about but the yeah i, I think going forward there could be something done to help clubs yeah. um of some more revenue from the broadcasting rights from the league going into these clubs especially also with the in the glad africa championship where you have very poor grants or, or you know by by comparison really mediocre yeah. grants to clubs um you know and and for them as well to to kind of stay up stay afloat uh, it would be nice if there was a bit more help coming in oh, okay mazet do you see a culture change in how these clubs are run uh due to what's being exposed at the moment uh look i don't know it would it would depend how how long this this goes on for i mean mm. for instance if there were to be if there were to be a vaccine in the next six months or right. in the next you know then then you almost feel like things kind of normalize a little bit because then you have a you have guaranteed sense of protection because there's something that can actually fight the virus so you know you'd think things would normalize and you know it, uh, business would carry on as normal but if it doesn't over the next little while we are all going to have to figure out a way we report i mean as it is look we we normally together doing this podcast together but now we we're doing it uh, you know in a different in a different uh, way we're trying to be you know innovative and i think the clubs will try to be but if they if, if there isn't football then how can you how can you try and find a different ap approach if you can't get back on the pitch to start playing you can't you can't go back to your sponsor and ask for more money if you can't give any guarantees that they'll get their mileage via you playing because i when i had a chat with john committees i think two three weeks back and we were talking about you know uh you know the, the industry collapsing and he says look the way we make money is we, we 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 sell we sell players we buy players we it's 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 merchandise you know mm. uh, the more the quicker we get back on the pitch the quicker we can make revenue and be able to pay salaries and be able to make money but if right. you can't give your sport any of that guarantee then unfortunately it's difficult to 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 talk about a, a different approach in future when you're not yet on the pitch the sooner they get back on the pitch, even if it's behind closed doors, then you can at least tell the sponsors of how they can have their day in the sun. Okay. No, fair but, enough. I, yeah, I, th I think the reality now is that um, uh, the, the, the clubs which are not well organized are going to suffer the most, mm. you know? And, and, and I think for me, um, we, we might look at it as, uh, as to say, um, the clubs which are now even leading in terms of uh, coming with the salary cuts, this is part of planning, you know. Uh, it means that there's something that they've seen. But uh, we've spoken about the issue of uh, um, club licensing, and that's another story for another day. And, and I think the professionalization uh, of, of our clubs is going to be really tested. Mm. And, 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 and at this time. And another point Jody was mentioning earlier, in fact, one of the questions that you were asking, you see, I believe that every country uh, has got its model, mm. you know, 
of how they are running clubs. Um, in North Africa, you know that um, the clubs, um, they are operating as, uh, as, as sports clubs. Right. Uh, in that I'm uh, wearing their jersey, they are, they are not just a, a football club, they're a sports club. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and besides their revenue, their revenue is not solely dependent on the TV money and also on the sponsors, but also on the membership fees mm. um, that they are getting um, at that side. And you also, most countries on the continent, uh, you then have um, teams which are owned by the police or by the soldiers or the revenue authority, right. you know. Yes. So here in South Africa, it's different, you know. Uh, you put club owners. Um, and I mean, you know, I was I was reading also um, the politics uh, behind the sale of uh, Newcastle, um, yes. which is now being contested uh, in the in the in the Gulf region. You know, um, and when you look in what is happening in England, it will never happen in the Bundesliga, because in in the Bundesliga they prevent a foreigner, uh, mm. I think, from owning more than forty nine percent of of the club of the club shares. So. Every country has got its different model, and 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 I believe that as much as I also have a challenge or a problem with the the one here in the PSL, but I think from what I've seen on the continent, it's a better model mm. compared to to other countries, and it's working for us, uh, except this area which I also don't like. You know, you have a team that was in Bombela, and all of a sudden they have to pack bags uh, <laughs> and leave that support base and yeah. go to Cape Town. You know, so, so, so yeah. Let me, let, me, let me get this straight. You're saying that model, the one where the team can leave, or the one where the owners are taking money from other businesses, is better than the membership one, where the actual fans of the club own a share. Am I am I understanding you? I'm I'm saying every country has got its model. Mm. You understand? Mm. And and that model it it has to be understood um, that. It, it, it's all, it varies from country to country, right. you know? We, we've got teams, uh, Gamza, which struggle to bring more than 500 supporters sometimes, mm -hmm. or even 1,000 supporters to the games. Yeah. So yeah. If, you, if you are saying now we must force them to have a club membership, where are they going to get funding? Yeah. When they've got uh, such a small su support base. Not so, for sure. I mean, the, 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 the ball... Yeah. The horse is already bolted from the stable. You can't go back and try quit get that groundswell of supporters. I get that, but surely yes, yes, yes. we're now yes. exposing the the, the the demerits of not having done that, not having that social compact with your supporter base. We'll show you up in times like these. That's what I mean. No, no, no. But 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 also remember um, that system, mm -hmm. uh, which is also a system in countries like Spain as well. Uh, with Barcelona, Madrid, and also other teams there. Yeah. Uh, it's not a system that was just uh, introduced over a, a 10 year period. Or mm. 10 year. Remember, this country, uh, this country in terms of organized football, um, we have not even finished at 30 years since our return to international sport. You know, mm. So we are always going to suffer the effects of uh, the challenges that we we're having. If, if you look at, um, um, I mean, as a country, we're, we've not even finished 30 years. Uh, as well. So as much as we have a challenge with, this, with the model that we're using, but you, you will find another country on the continent which is looking at, hey, you know what? I would love to see the model that in South Africa the clubs are, are using. You know what I mean? Mm. So. There's always going to be those advantages and disadvantages of the model that we're using, uh, because even in the membership one, uh, it's got challenges. Because you see, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting question that we're asking. Because mm. I asked uh, Moraga Swallow, in fact, Swallows FC, to say, mm. I saw you uh, having this model where you were encouraging people to have membership, mm. and they've discontinued that, because yeah. apparently, according to the laws, there there are things which prevent that type of a um, set of, of a model, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Set up here in South Africa. So, which means that even in the operation of the PSL, uh, because if if you were to say you're introducing it today, a club like Kaiser Chiefs has got more than 10 million uh, supporters. Mm. 
if if you were to say the membership is 200 rands annually look at the amount of money that they, they could make right but it also opens up uh, other things as well so so, so I, I i think the issue of membership is another story for another day but one of the things which i think this crisis we're in now is going to do and hence now we even hear the talk of uh, the sale of spare thought for a team that are struggling financially even before and mm-hmm. uh, this like the blockade and Celtic. Now they they are definitely up for grabs. I can there is no way that they are not going to be sold. You know, uh, blockade and Celtic because I don't see them how they are going to survive. Um, and and hence now you've got the situation of them possibly being sold um, to Tim Sogazi or up sure. there. Limpopo, or another province I've also heard that they could be going to. Huh. It's, it's inevitable that, that that is going to happen because they, they are struggling. And right. now this presents them with a serious challenges. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so we're just uh, starting part two of our discussion, um, catching up with the guys just to wrap up on what's been happening as far as local football is concerned here in South Africa. And of course, we've now touched on the effect of these wage cuts and the potential. Uh, we'll see obviously how it plays out in the weeks to come. As Mazola said, who knows, we could be very quickly back on the field depending on what happens or it could be a while. So with all that in the air, I guess we'll see the ramifications of these economic decisions on our football as the weeks unfurl. Let's now move on to uh, Safa. Very strange week. Um, Game Gwena, who was the acting CEO, came out. I mean, for me, I didn't really read too much into it. He was a guy who was saying, cool, I'm stepping down. You know, I know that I look at that that innocently. Someone like you, Veli, will look at a situation like that and be like, something is up here. And you want to lift the hood on, on, on something like that, only to find out now that those reports were erroneous. Can I just give us an idea what's happening here with the relationship between Mr. Mukwena and Saf? Uh, no, I, think, I think that one is very interesting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting. And also having read the article uh, that mm-hmm. was written by Tipu Lobi on the City Press, um, and I, I, I kind of relate to what was written there. Mm-hmm. Um, why I'm saying this, um, Mr. Mukwena was appointed um, around November, you know, and he was supposed to be there for only three months. And I remember asking him this question in January to say, okay, well, in January now, you said you're only going to be here for three months um, and that you'll be busy uh, trying to, to help um, look for your replacement. And he said, yes, I'm, I'm sticking to that. I'm still... Um, looking at only being here for three months and I'm going to go after mm-hmm. that. But he left in in April. And the three months, I think it elapsed at the end of February. You know? Right, right. So to, to, to say that uh, as a response from Safa to say no, um, his contract was until the end of March. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it's, difficult, it's difficult to understand. And, 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 and you see, most of the time, I will always side with a, a colleague, a journalist in this mm. case, because no one just goes and writes whatever he likes to write. You open yourself up got, to problems, yes. He, he got information somewhere. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I also understand, I also understand uh, that the FAA does have financial challenges. They've been having this on financial challenges for, for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's normal that at this phase now is going to make things worse. Um, f- f- for them. No. Um, Safa has also denied that uh, there are going to be retrenchments at, 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 at the FA. But I can tell you right now that they are struggling or they are going to struggle to pay salaries now. You know? Hmm. Um, I, I had had something um, that um, staff is being given three options. Um, either to take unpaid leave during this period uh, take salary cuts. Mm-hmm. Um, should, what, what was the first one? But 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 but, but uh, there's an, there's another one as well. Mm-hmm. There's a third, third option that they've been given. So it it tells you that there are these um, serious challenges, and you cannot rule out the issue 
of retrenchments. But look, uh, you you always know that uh, the FA is always going to come out come out and, and, and deny um, when these things come out of them. But look, no no one, especially a respectable journalist, no one can just come up and trump up um, allegations like that. Uh, you know, there's a saying in Kosa that says, mm. uh, so, so it's the one that says, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. Right, know? right. So, 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 so definitely um, on, on this one, I don't think it was just a simple thing. Because if it is a simple thing of him resigning, then what's the next step? Exactly, you yeah. Know? If, if, if it was always known that his contract is finishing on the 31st, then he's leaving, and then the fact that Safa till today has not told us who is the acting CEO, it mm. tells you that this thing was not planned. Hmm. This thing was not planned, and I don't even think, as things stand, Safa is ready to say they are appointing a new permanent CEO. And remember, Safa has not had a, a permanent CEO since the departure of uh, Dennis Mumble back in oh. 2018. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, before COVID, Safa already broke, according to reports. Right. Um, and already trying to get sponsors in. Um, and they've actually just, while we were sitting here, they, they sent out a press release of sorts where they said, They've been promised relief by the in the by the South African government and FIFA. They're waiting on those two parties to see what they're going to get from them, which may also impact on, you know, what they can, whether they can keep, whether they can avoid retrenchments and, and such like. But you know, yeah, I mean, what what Malila is saying that SAFA have said to their employees is not is is very 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 credible because it's what most companies are saying. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. I guess that's, that, that, that even, is. Even, even our sector, I mean, even our sector is not mm. uh, is not being spared here. I mean, mm. I saw I saw a media house that is enforcing thirty to fifty percent of our ads during this time, and and this is not just for people who are even freelancing. People who are working, you know, who mm. uh, need to work at this time. So. But, but this one of Safa, maybe it's also important to put aside the issues of COVID-19 and, you know, yeah. say there's always going to be challenges. Because there was also this talk that the relief fund that was, uh, that government released, uh, where people were supposed to apply for it, it was not really for federations, that one. It was for athletes. And mm. athletes who have, who had uh, scheduled, mm. um, uh, tournaments or, right. or, 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 yeah, who, who had commitments during, the, during, during, during this period. We can prove that uh, I'm Akane Simbini, I was going to run in this IWF Diamond meeting, you know, right. um, not, just, ju not just a federation. So the one twenty that is talking about, maybe now, uh, as part of this uh, package, this 500 billion rand package that the government yeah has came forward with maybe the, there's an allocation now that will also be put aside to assist the development of sports, arts and culture, uh, which will also uh, help federations. Okay, great. Uh, that's, uh, I guess, a, a good roundup of what's happening there with uh, Safa. Mazola, there was a story that you did as far as Mamelodi Sundowns are concerned. Uh, David Notoane, who kind of, you know, splits his time between that club and his role as under 23 coach. Uh, surprise, Muriri, what's happening with them? Yeah, look, I came across uh, the story, uh, you know, sometime last week or maybe even the week before. Mm -hmm. You know, set, set on it for quite some time because at first, when, when I got the story, there were suggestions that the club was trying to get rid of, of, of David Nordwan, you know. Hmm. So, obviously, I, 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 I mean, if you're looking at the MDC log table, David's done pretty pretty well with, with, with the MDC and before the season was stopped, you know, with the remaining games of Sundowns, MDC team won all the games David would have won the, 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 the MDC uh, championship, right. you know. So I did more digging and it turns out there's a proposal on the table for David to become sort of an assistant uh, technical director or an, a technical director for you know, uh, for, 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 the, for, for, for the junior, junior team. Because we know yeah. that Sundowns 
Atlanta last year appointed Jose uh, Ramon Alexanco, uh, you know, uh, a Spaniard, a former Barcelona coach, mm. uh, you know, and a national team coach as well, who's now, you know, working hand in hand with the, he's the director of, of, of the academy and scouting at Mamelodi Sundown. So the, the proposal is for David to, to, to move up the ranks, if you like, to work alongside him and oversee the under 13s and teams of the team while also still having his job as under 23 coach. We know he recently helped them qualify for the Olympics. If mm-hmm. it had not been for the, they would have been headed to the Olympics uh, in the, in the coming months. Uh, and it, it, it now sounds like surprise Moriri has also effectively taken over, you know, surprise was his, his assistant in the mm-hmm. MDC and somehow taken over as, as the head coach of the MDC team. You know, people might look at it differently. People might feel, ah, oh, it's a good news story. David Notwani being recognized within the club to move up the ranks and, and do something uh, else to oversee sort of the, the, the youth development at Mamelodi Sundowns while, while also still part of the, the SAFA structures as well. Some people may feel, why, why fix something that's not broken? I mean, David's been doing well for, uh, as coach of the MDC. Why not keep him there, finish the season as the, as the champion and then sort of make changes later on. And right. also, why, why has the club not made any announcements? I mean, I, I gave the club four days to respond to, to some of my queries because I just mm. wanted them to hit on what this will, will look like. You know, will, 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 it, will, it, you know will, it, will it mean that David can also work closely with, with the, the head coach, Pito Musimani, if, if he sticks around? So... You know, people are reading. People are reading whatever they want. You can read into it as a positive story that David is promoted and surprised Moriri as a, as the legend of the club who played for Sundowns for twelve years, as finally has a significant role in the club. Mm. Or you can look at it. They're trying to get off, get rid of of, of David Noto and then Pizzo Musimani is next. You know, it, it just depends how you see the story. I I sort of saw it as a. I think even maybe even in the manner in which I wrote it reflects that. I see it as a positive story that people who've done well within the club are being rewarded. But, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I see Billy. The look but, on Billy's but, face. <laughs> well, Lila has a, has a different opinion going on there. I think. No, you know, uh, I, I, what I see here is the, is the re-emergence of um, the Spanish influence within Sunday. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, we, there was a time Sundowns had a a, a Yuan Niskins who with strong Barcelona roots, mm. uh, and, and also Christos was, uh, Christos as well, uh, who was who had also apparently been recommended mm. uh, yes. in Barcelona, and and also there was also the Yuan Cruyff Institute, um, yeah. which was in full control. Um, yeah. of the development systems at Sundowns, which led to the departure of uh, the late maestro, uh, Ted Dimitri. Mm. So, yeah. what I've also heard that at Sundowns, these Spanish guys, you know, they are back in, 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 in full force. In fact, there's even been uh, indications that um, if Coach Pizzo doesn't stay at Sundowns, mm. uh, he could be replaced by a Spaniard coach. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, so which which is a serious concern for me, um, which maybe in fact uh, now it, it also leads you to think: Are they preparing um, for 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 that type of a situation where um, there will be a Spaniard um, who will be in charge? Because even the current uh, TD, the current TD yeah. is also from Spain, right? Mm. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, so you see, because when when you have a coach who's qualified for the Olympics, uh, you you become clear. You know, you become clear because there's there's a spot that has always been available that, that has never filled when Rulani left as a second assistant coach. If you say you are promoting, uh, the only way that you can promote David Mwane is to take him to the first team. You know, right. Anything less than that is not a promotion, you know, um, because so this, 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 especially a coach uh, out of 54 countries on the continent, 
who is only one of three teams that are going to the Olympics. Mm. It means that there's something oh. good. Mm. Just just go back with Velile. You said it's not a promotion if you are what if you are moving if you are being moved from MDC to being. Uh, so you yeah. reckon this is not a promotion at all? Mason, where have you heard of an assistant of a technical director? <laughs> <laughs> this position has been invented by Sundowns, I think. You know. You know <laughs> Yikes! No, no, no. This this is an Olympic qualifying coach. That's you know? true. You make a very yeah, good point, Vivi. Yeah, and, and, oh, you make a very and, good point. And and who's done very well to promote good players uh, at Sundowns? You know, Sundowns might not have promoted um, a lot of players like Kira Shears maybe in the last two seasons, but mm. the quality of a young star that Sundowns promotes sure. compared mm. to the quality of the young star that Shields promotes, mm. there's a huge difference. There. It's quality it's versus all, quantity. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Look at this boy, Promise Mkoma, uh, an MVP from the Kosafa under 20, but it has taken him time to even get a, 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 first, a first team contract, you know? And you look at, you look at uh, Mahalwa, you look at Lukubeni now, you look at the players who are coming up, um, you know, and, and, and the way that, that they do it as well, uh, taking him taking the boy out to, on loan to go and get game time elsewhere and then come back and be a regular, you know? So, you know, uh, and, and all of these things are happening at a time when uh, Kenneth Makanya has also returned uh, to, 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 to Sundowns. Yeah. I'm sorry. The way I see this thing, it's, 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 it's just... Mm-hmm. Really it's all your sound is cutting out all the time. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. I don't know. I don't know what's happening with my internet connection today. But I was saying, I'm with Velile in the in the sense that if if this really was uh, there was nothing sinister to it. I mean, I gave the club four days to 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 elaborate on exactly what was happening. Mm. If there was nothing, sinister, the club would have said yes. This is exactly what's happening. But I mean, as Velile said, you you know, where have you ever heard, you know, of a you know of a coach that's done so well as a junior national team coach, and for 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 the reserve team, be just being, I suppose you can put it and say being reduced to an assistant to a Did technical director. Did you just director. do a one eighty? No, no, no. I'm saying, look, I'm, <laughs> uh, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Yeah. I said when I, I said the story. That when I wrote the story that I, o- I was also in two minds to say, look, uh, do, is, this, is this something positive? Is, is it something negative? I mean, I put a disclaimer before I, I discussed this to say, depending on how you look at it, you might look at it as saying, okay, maybe it's a promotion of some sort, or you can say, no, there's no way. This, there's something sinister to this. Maybe it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a build up to a, an exodus of, of of some sort, you know, right. uh, but also maybe it's, it's good for surprise Moriri in that he's now, he now has a senior role within the club. It depends how you look at it, but yeah, but yeah, 180, I'm, I'm completely on the fence about this, but I just decided to, to take the angle in which I took for, for reasons <laughs> that, for reasons that I cannot disclose. <laughs> I don't know. It's understandable. It's understandable because look, I'm not the owner of the story. I can say whatever I want to say about the story. Uh, and Masola here, and you, you know, I, I think this is what sometimes people don't understand to say, you know, when we, when we write stories, mm. uh, that, that is just maybe 40% what is on the stories, 40% of the information you've got. Right. 60% is not there because you have to manage the information. So Masola is managing the information here. I'm, 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 I'm managing the story. I'm managing the story. <laughs> So 40% the on the record, the information. 60% is off the record, 40% is on the record. Then you wonder why print is dying. Then you wonder why print is dying, gents. Are you leaving 60% no, 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 no. You know, you know but, 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 but this is an interesting point to say print is dying. But even you people in broadcast, uh, you always, <laughs> you always uh, respond to what is on the print. Of course. <laughs> because you, you hardly have content of your own. No, for sure. <laughs> and, and you know that why, that's, why that is so, right? It's because the proximity yeah. of those on the screen to, on, to those who own the product. Yeah. If you catch my drift. I used to work on a show called PSL News. Some of them. I used to work on a show called PSL News. 
we were only allowed to speak about good news. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. The show will be very interesting today. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, you know, this is why things like Front Runner exist is because you kind of have to say, listen, guys, we can't all just sit here and pretend that it's hunky dory. You know, we have to be able to pick it apart. 60% of the story is still coming. <laughs> no, is it? Okay. 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 I like well, that. The, the, the follow up. Yeah. The follow up. Okay. okay. You have to look at the fact though that on top of all this, that why has Pizza Mozzanar and Mani not signed a new contract at Sundown? Right. It's a no brainer. <laughs> it's an absolute no brainer that the guy should have signed a new contract, should have a new contract, unless something is going on behind the scenes yeah. at Sundown. So he's seeing this La Revolution in the, happening with the Spanish guys and he's saying, I'm not, I don't want to be part of this? Is that what you... No, I think, I, I think it's from both sides. I think mm. there's, there's, he's, he's delaying and then they're delaying giving he's him what he wants. Right. Uh, but I, I think I, at some yeah. point, this has done all he can at Sundown and should move on. Should, that's, should a, yeah, that's also part of me that says that that listen man why can't he just go prove and be great and go do it somewhere else look Maybe. Peter said Peter mm-hmm. said he signed a contract and it's the club that's dilly dally so I don't know hmm. which, he said, which, he, which, which yeah which, which leads to the next question <laughs> does Sundowns want to continue with Peter exactly exactly mm. Mm. yeah exactly Hey, there you go. Okay, let's leave it at that, guys. We've spoken a lot. Um, we, we should have known that adding stuff edge adds a, another Zoom link. A, a oh. Zoom link. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Belly. Gents, John T. Mazola, dope yes. as always. Uh, we'll do this again in the new week. Um, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. And yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed that football somehow returns as soon as possible. Maybe this is a good news story coming Monday. Let's see.